Hey guys, Rich here. I uh, thought I would start doing some breakdowns of some of my most well-known tracks just so you guys can get a feel for how I've constructed them and kind of get another look behind the scenes because it's always simpler than you think it is. Um, so we're going to start with this track, Syndrome. Now this track was featured on a mother TV spot. Uh, which we won a music and sound award for. So this one has been reused quite a bit since then. Um, this is a really interesting one. This is from the Throat 2 album, which is basically sort of organic trailer music based around me and a, me and another guy playing the cello. Um, it's quite unusual sounding and it fits really well in the horror genre. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a listen to it first. And then I'll talk you through all the all my thought processes behind how it's laid out, etc. Um, so here we go. Let's have a listen. Boom, there we go. Okay, so those of you who've done my trailer course, you will notice that uh, I've still stuck to the three-act structure. Um, we've got this nice introduction, the section Act 1, which sets the tone. Then we've got Act 2, which is basically the cello, sets the pace. And Act 3 is the kitchen sink. Um, but you'll also notice it's quite an unconventional track. Uh, you know, it's not it's not using any chord changes as such. It's it's a very textural piece. Now, I love writing like this, um, and that's why uh, we've. So this is our third throat album, which is great, great fun. So it's just focus on the texture. You know, to be honest, with you, like some some of the times when we're, when I'm playing these cello parts, I don't think any of these cello parts would be playing. Um, it was my friend Tim who we sampled for Inventive Instruments uh, Chamber Cello, which you can get on inventiveinstruments.com. Um, 
he's playing this stuff, but most of the time we're I'm choosing notes that are dissonant. I'm not choosing notes that sound nice. And some of the times, some of my other tracks, I'm purposely playing out of tune and to be quite honest with you, out of time as well. But you know, it works. So we're pitching for thrillers, dramas, or not dramas, thrillers, horrors, uh, and action films. And this is sat beautifully in the horror genre, this sound. So the birth of this was me recording myself playing the double bass, this here. So initially that was, that note was much longer, it tailed in, tailed out, but um, all I've done is just cut it, snip, snip, uh, and then I've added a fade in, fade out on the track. I've got a JJP bass, which I love that plugin for bass sounds, it's amazing. Uh, and then what I did was I layered on top of that harmonics of me playing. Again, I wasn't focused, I wasn't thinking about the tuning per such, I was just thinking about how the textures would work. And I layered and layered this, and then I got my violin out and my cello out, and we ended up with this sound. which sounds like some kind of strange, haunted train going through a darkened tunnel. Um, and that's how I like writing. I like to think about a weird picture uh, and try and paint it. Uh, and sometimes, which kind of goes against some of the stuff I was talking about in the trailer music course, sometimes it doesn't matter if it's in, it is in tune, it doesn't matter if it's out of time, you're looking for a feeling. And that's the important part on this track here. So I laid out... Uh, I laid out this track here based around this growing sample set here of this beautiful haunted train. Uh, and I got to act two. Well, let's get to that bit. Let's go through this bit. Then obviously my next step is to add in the low end drums, which is a mixture of uh, Spitfire Audius, Hans Zimmer drums and uh, damage by um, Heavy Osteen. And you can see I start off with my favorite low end kick. It's the damage punch kit, just gives you this lovely, really sets the cinematic tone. And gradually, we just expanded it to emphasize those cut points, uh, which I talk about again in my trailer course. Picking out cut points, and I like to do that, you know, every bar, every two bars, every four bars, every eight bars, pick out the big hits. Um, I haven't used any traditional trailer kind of hits here, these are all just low, low drums. And then once you have, once you add that to the cello uh, and the double bass, pretty minimal it's pretty minimal um so i then started adding in the mid drum sounds so the toms and things like that and the tycos to bring the pace and they come in let's have a listen to them they come in at the start of act two here um I've gone for this lovely heartbeat sound, which is actually a trillion bass, but it's so low, it comes, I think it's uh, just a clicky sub. And then you can bring that heartbeat with this. Beautifully complements that weird, eerie sound. And then obviously I'm getting into one minute in the track, so some things need to happen. So, hello. Here comes my damaged plastic drums. So if we go into the plastic drums, you'll see, uh, I'm not afraid of loops. Um, 
because you know what? They're an incredible tool to help me write quickly. Uh, and then once I've done the loops, I'll go in and change the endings at the end of every four bars, eight bars, whatever, just so that it doesn't feel so loopy. Uh, and then obviously I like textures. So this lovely sound here. Which I think was me exporting again, ex uh, uh, exporting a sample, uh, smashed through distortion, and then put through uh, an echo, just to give that kind of like emphasis of pace. But still, it's missing something. Um, so my thought next was, how am I going to get the pace without sort of interfering with the the low end drums and all the double bass sounds and sticks is my go to for um, creating pace in a kind of like a urgency. Keep it subtle, guys. Keep it subtle. Just the ticking clock. And then the drum rims. Again, you can hear I'm not using complicated rhythms. I'm just picking up, accenting the beat so that it gives it a sense of urgency, a sense of pace. So here, this is where I start to pick out, because obviously it's one minute 30. I want the editors to feel like it's picking up by now. Um, so we get to one minute 30, I think, okay, I've got to pick out some rhythm, which I, th I think I mimic from the mid drum set. Okay, so you can hear it's starting to pick up but I still want more uh, weird noises, more intensity, so. Bringing in my string risers here, which are so important to bring that build, especially in horror tracks. Because, um, you know, that in itself is a horror trailer cue, really, isn't it? Right, anyone who's downloaded any of the, the free Inventor Instruments samples I've created will know that I, I, I like weird sounds because they help broaden your palette. You know, you're not just using your strings and your words and your brass and your epic drums. You're using other effects, other weird sounds. Even those instruments, strings, brass and woods, play differently or layered differently or affected so that you then get this added texture of this rise. So you can hear that uh, it's already, um, it's already quite subtle, that stuff in the background, but every layer helps. Okay, so this ending here, so what I did here was I was I had this loop going on and I, th I thought, okay, well, I'm getting on two minutes, can't exactly keep pushing this. So, classic eighth note, da 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 build to really have a little drop down into the next section. Now, this next trick I did here is one of my favorites. I absolutely love doing this. A tempo change. You know, why can't you have a tempo change at the end? Uh, so we've got this great pace coming in. Wait a second. It's completely changed tempo, changed feeling. Now the great thing about tempo change is it's a nice little tool, um, again, to save time and to utilize and maximize your palette. I haven't changed anything really. I've just changed the tempo. So you hear, here I just, I thought, well, what am I going to do to help this 
tick along. I know, I'll just chop that double bass sample to become a pulse. And then when it gets to this section here, it becomes kind of like a strange, uh, a strange boam, but more like a bleh, you know, a distant dying boam uh, in the background. Um, just like that. And the same with the drums, we have to pick up the pace of this new tempo and I will start with my low. Just picking out, oh, I put some metals in here to bring out those bars. And obviously then I bring in the Tycho's. So it helps it here at this point if you want to change the rhythm up. So previously I didn't really have much syncopation, but this one, a lot more syncopation going on. And then the sticks and high drums. It's basically a military band, isn't it? Clapping along to the beat. Um, keeping it really simple. You can see me looping the stuff here. I, you know, I'm very keen on saving time. Um, as long as it feels like it's progressing and you make it feel like it's progressing by adding in risers and effects. And then in this third repeat, I do change it to then picking out again this eighth note build. And then, really nice, simple way, how do I finish my trailer track? You give it some kind of change of rhythm, usually in triplets. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Um, and then you extend it a couple of times. So rather than going... Dun, 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 you go, this is my rhythm. You throw in some interesting rhythm changes going between triplets and tuplets and straight eighth notes, straight quarter notes. Um, and that way, you just give it this really bizarre, jilted ending, which leaves people wanting more, but also makes it feel like a clear punctuation point, which is really important for the editors. Um, so I sent the track as it is, all this stuff up here, I sent it to Vic, the elephant. He said, Rich, this is huge, I love it, but it's missing something. So this is when I called my friend Tim, I said, Tim, can you come and play the cello for me, please? Uh, and I... Again, I started with this. Let's keep the root notes simple, Tim. Boom, boom. Bum, bum. Again, keep it like a pulse, heartbeat. Um, now, uh, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Steve Reich. Um, Steve Reich, uh, he has done a piece of music called Clapping Music, uh, which is two people clapping, uh, and their rhythms go in and out of phase. And it's, well, it's more of a educational listen rather than a, you know, I'm going to sit down and listen to clapping music. Uh, but he's got this fantastic rhythm. It's uh, da 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 da, and that rhythm has just been in my head almost my entire musical career. Uh, so this is my homage to clapping music. Again, he's playing Cole Lenio, so he's hitting the wood on the strings. It gives it this uh, interesting texture. Um, he's just picking out the notes. Uh, on the beat, da, 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 eighth notes. Then, here's my Steve Wright clapping music. Hello. And then I double up that original pulse with a lower version. Da, 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 da. So you can see, I even called this one cello Reich, um, which I didn't include in there. So this was our use of the cello. Uh, again, when I record, you can see here, I just, I recorded Tim and, uh, okay, yeah, actually, I, uh, I think it was two bars I recorded him playing and then I just cut up the audio, two bars, eight bars, four bars, uh, cut up the audio uh, rather than using flex time because I actually think flex time in Logic is well, nothing compared to the, the um, flex time manipulation pro tools. So I don't bother, I just chop up the audio, move it and then use fades which sometimes 
ends with some clicking and things, but uh, if you're careful, it doesn't. <laughs> So you can see, I'm, I'm using the same samples. Yeah. See, there we go, is that a good example of? See, there we go, how precious can you be? Because even this track, which has been on trailers, there's still clips and clicks in that cello part. You know, done is better than perfect. That's what I like to say. So I just wrote this cello part and I thought, I, you know, I got Tim to play the notes, the root notes, and then we just went a few, it went up a, th uh, a minor third, and then, because the notes, it was about the rhythm, we kept it a, cl a cluster of notes. So it was uh, uh, a tone, a minor third, perhaps a semitone below. So it felt like it was moving and shimmering, which it does when we get to this point here, when all the parts are playing. It doesn't sound nice, it sounds cool. And it gives it that pace which Act 2 requires. Here we go. So we go like this. Here's our reverse hit into the pace, which is brought to you front and foremost uh, by the cello. Although I do bring in the sticks in a second. That Colenio, which if you notice is also out of tune, it doesn't matter, it's a horror track. We want a texture, we want pace, we want feeling. And the out of tune just adds to that kind of like unnerving feeling. It's awesome. You know, I, I often think don't get precious about your track, just get it done. So you can hear what's happening is the way I generally work is this this comes from my days when I used to write uh, music for adverts because in advertising they're like hey we need something to happen every five or ten seconds you know if you imagine your track is like a staircase at eight, five or ten seconds you add a layer you add a layer you add a layer so that's what I've done here this first cello part here's our next layer with the next cello part and the sticks uh, then our next layer with another cello part our next layer with the sticks and this semitone out cello. Next layer, plastic. Next layer, subtle, but it's still a layer. Next layer, big drums. Next layer, the riser is coming in. Next layer, sticks, crushers. Next layer, buckets. So I've kept this material going for almost two minutes, basically using loops. Um, but using the loops cleverly. So I'm just layering everything up and I'm thinking about how I'm adding a layer of intensity and build up to this point. And then act three is just a short version of the same thing. Layer, next layer comes in, the risers. This time rather than one layer, it's a few layers come in at the same time. Then all the drums. Then the drums and the risers. Now, if you don't want to add the layers in, then you change it up by bringing a build with rhythm, which I've done. Okay, there we go. Um, so this this track was written in a few stages. Uh, syndrome, you can tell, tell up here because it was originally called Night Terror. Uh, Vic Elephant changed it to Syndrome, which is a much better name. Um, it was written in stages, so I ha I recorded these uh, double bass parts and I did these drums next and the textures and then the next stage was the cello parts and obviously we had some fine tuning to make sure that it felt like it was building and growing for, for the 2 minutes 40 
this track has done exceptionally well. Like I said, it's it's won me an award. Uh, it's probably brought in six figures of income. I mean, it's done amazingly. Um, it, and the wonderful thing is, it's it's really simple. Uh, yes, I have good samples, and yes, I have access to a fantastic cello uh, or cellist. And uh, and for my other tracks on throw, I also have my own cello, which sadly uh, is, <laughs> is is now broken. Um, maybe it's, maybe I'd still use it as a drum or something. Anyway, um, it's incredibly simple. Uh, and yes, I have the big sample libraries like the Hans Zimmer drums and Damage Heaviosity. But you know, some of the things I'm using here. I mean, that's really awful distortion. Uh, and you know, this hit this damage. Although it's a damaged drum. You can reproduce that very, very easily. I just like to use that because it's, it's just there. I just load it up in one of my presets. I say, I want my damaged punch kit. There it is. And that's the business. Okay. So if you want to produce a track like this, think about your acts, your introduction, which is act one, then act two, which is adding the drama and pace. Then your drop down. You know, this is a pretty long drop down, admittedly, uh, but it felt right for the track. And then your third act where you bring it home. Okay. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to throw everything at it, but it needs to feel like a final act. It needs to feel like a conclusion or a build to something, in this case, something not quite right. Um, think about cut points. Uh, Again, I've used the low drums to give cut points every few bars, you know, every four bars, every eight bars, because firstly, it helps you structure the track. And secondly, it helps the editor find a place to cut the track so that they can put it into their trailer. Because to be honest with you, most trailer tracks, you know, most trailers, you're not going to have the whole trailer. Most trailers, most trailers are a selection of snippets of tracks. Um, you know, some trailers I've I've been paid to, and they've just used a boam, boam, or even just a hit of of a track that I've sent. So for the mother trailer, they pretty much just used this stuff and that bass. Um, it was used for this uh, amazing uh, Chinese film called Shadow, uh, and they they used pretty much the whole track whole track. Uh, which was exciting because it was a really creepy trailer. But yeah, um, don't be afraid to get weird with your sounds as well. Um, all music is based around feeling and mood, and the the way you get to that mood doesn't matter. It's the end product that matters. Don't get too caught up in, oh, wait, I'm, I haven't got the Waves compressor that I want. You know, don't get caught up in that. Oh, I shouldn't be using presets. It's cheating. Yeah, it's not cheating. You're creating an effect. You're getting to point A, however way you want to. If you want to spend twelve hours of your day mucking about with a, with your own sounds or tweaking your synthesizer to get to point A, or you want to use a preset, or you know one of your saved presets, your own user presets, then that's up to you. Uh, obviously, a mixture of both is good because it's good to have your own sounds. Um, but I'm talking about when you're writing a track here. So maybe set aside some time to explore the sounds you like. So this, all these double bass samples were recorded. I set aside a day to record me trying to play a double bass uh, and a violin, and the result was this lovely noise. Uh, and now that's part of my arsenal. That's part of my collection of sounds. I, I hope you enjoyed this um, breakdown of my track syndrome and I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions, just uh, post them in the comments below. Um, if there's any other of my tracks you'd like me to walk you through, please let me know. I'm more than happy to show you my process because, you know, I love doing this. Uh, and I also want to help other people do it because it's super fun. <laughs> um, yeah, any other questions or or hit me up on uh, hit Richard Schreiber up on Facebook and uh, yeah take care guys oh yeah wait a second don't forget to click like on the video and subscribe to my channel cheers guys